Well, and let's start jumping to the deep side of the pool right away. Did the West fail to develop and execute a deterrence policy, uh, either of denial or punishment uh, to Russia, uh, to avoid the invasion of February of 2022? And similarly, why uh, Russia was not able to deter the growth of NATO uh, members surrounding its territory? Uh, let's start with the first part of it. And I think the evidence clearly points to the fact that the West has failed to deter because Russia did invade. The Biden administration has been very proud of uh, having predicted the invasion, but they did not prevent it. And that is, of course, crucial because there has been such devastating loss of life. The Russian forces have not succeeded in... Uh, uh, taking Kiev and uh, removing the government of uh, President Zelensky, but they have inflicted terrible damage. And clearly, Vladimir Putin is frustrated by the enlargement of NATO. They had not been able to prevent it. In fact, they may be facing more enlargement should Finland and uh, Sweden decide to, to join. But I don't think that is necessarily the primary motivating factor. I think what he feared most in the case of Ukraine was that Ukraine could become a successful democratic state that uh, is Western oriented, that would present an alternate model to the kind of dictatorship that is running inside Russia. So it was that fear of contamination because it was not just coincidence that prior to the invasion, the level of repression within Russia was dramatically increased. So, in your view, it was not a provocation of the NATO countries to expand their membership. Putin, as a matter of fact, just recently in a major speech, scolded the West uh, for failing to hit Russian demands for security guarantees and roll back NATO expansion. In 2014, Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, there had been that NATO enlargement already. And the excuse at that point was that the Ukrainian government was reaching some agreements, uh, vague agreements, with the European Union. So the European Union was uh, the excuse at that point. So it's obvious that Russia would prefer that NATO had not enlarged. It's obvious that they would have preferred to have some kind of uh, security guarantees. But that doesn't mean that this was the primary reason for Russia to engage in this attack. I think it was a combination of fear of democratic contamination. There's nothing that Vladimir Putin fears more than democracy, because that would lead to the removal of this repressive kleptocratic government, a very corrupt government that is running. And so he wants to prevent that. But the other element that uh, Vladimir Putin doesn't really want to see is in addition to this kind of danger of contamination, he doesn't want to see any kind of challenges to the image of Russia of invincibility. And so he looks for opportunities to divert attention away from domestic problems by trying to find external successes. And it seemed tempting when you look back to prior these events in uh, uh, February of this year, what was the picture? Well, the West was not willing to sell defensive armaments to Ukraine. In many cases, Germany refused to do that. Uh, Canada refused to do that. United States only allowed a small trickle. Uh, the president of the United States kept saying NATO will not be involved directly. So it's almost as if Vladimir Putin uh, was looking at the international picture and saying, in 2008, we went into Georgia. My popularity increased domestically and I got away with it. In 2014, we went into Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine. We annexed Crimea illegally. The sanctions that were leveled were ineffective, and my popularity increased domestically. In 2015, we went into Syria. We propped up the regime of Bashir al-Assad, and nothing was done to prevent us. So why should we not be able to take an opportunity to crush Ukraine, to change the regime in Ukraine, to put pressure on NATO. So it was a combination of a need to prevent democratic contamination 
and a perception of opportunity. And I think that combination proved to be toxic. So did Putin execute his plan according to what he thought the invasion would be and simply fail to perform well? Or did he have a mistaken view of what Russia uh, would expect in Ukraine and the military strategy was ill-designed? What happened then? If we look at it from the perspective of the Kremlin and their calculations, those calculations were not irrational because uh, the expectation was that the West was not going to come to the rescue of Ukraine, that there were going to be protests, but not much will be done, that the Ukrainian forces will collapse, that uh, this uh, regime inside uh, the uh, 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 country of, of, of Ukraine would not have uh, the ability to withstand uh, a, Russian, a Russian attack. And they came very close to achieving that. Just think of the advice that the Biden administration gave to President Zelensky on the first day of the invasion, which was to evacuate. And we could do a thought experiment. If the president of Ukraine had fled the way the president of uh, Afghanistan had fled, that would have led to a collapse of morale. The uh, Russian forces were landing at airports. They were pushing from the north. Vladimir Putin could very well have had this victory parade. But where the miscalculation came about was President Zelensky. President Zelensky refused to leave. President Zelensky was defiant. President Zelensky shamed the West into helping. When the Ukrainians resisted, when he said, I need ammunition, I am not looking for a ride, that sent a kind of Churchillian message, which was, we will fight whatever it takes. And there were then massive protests in Germany in support of Ukraine. The German government had a dramatic change of policy. Over 30 years of policy were reversed virtually overnight, where Germany said, we are now going to spend 100 billion euros on rearming. We are going to commit to 2% of the GDP expenditures on defense, which they didn't do for 30 years. We are going to now so change our policies that Russian energy dependence will be diminished. Well, these were dramatic changes that were not anticipated. This is something that would not have happened had Zelensky had fled. So when we say now that uh, Vladimir Putin uh, made catastrophically bad decisions. The effect is indeed that. I think they were catastrophically bad decisions, but they were not uh, done in the case of a kind of wild gamble. It was that he did not count, just as in uh, the case of uh, the Second World War, where the Nazis did not count on Churchill. And we know that uh, if Neville Chamberlain had stayed as prime minister, the outcome might have been very, very different. We know that if Lord Halifax had become prime minister, the outcome might have been very different. So what it tells us is that, yes, at levels of analysis, we look at individuals, we look at the unit of the state, we look at the system, but we tend to forget that it does make a difference who the leaders are. Leadership matters. Well, thank you very much. We just came to the end of this first segment. There's so much more to discuss about this. We just scratched the surface, literally. Uh,